Okay. Welcome to another random walk down Mill Street. Today's topic is a, a short but common phrase that we see in our Sidur. Uh, in various forms of it. Uh, and I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. And while I think I've done a lot of work here, and you'll see and you'll judge me at the end, um, there's more to do. And in fact, if you want to help me with this project, uh, we the, the thing that I couldn't do in the time allotted was to um, examine all the old uh, prayer manuscripts, the Machzorim, the Seder Tefilot, the Orden d'Oraciones uh, from North Africa, from Italy, from Spain, which might shed a little more light. You'll, you'll see there's some gaps in time that I would like to fill. But let's jump into it. So you, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we will start right here at the beginning. Um, I realize I didn't share my screen. I'm looking at my uh, PowerPoint, but you aren't. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes? Excellent, thank you. Tekubal brachamim ubratzon tefila tenu. That is the topic for today's uh, uh, random walk. So we're going to start with uh, what we do here at Sheret Israel, which is that the conclusion of every prayer service, almost, almost every prayer service, the Chazan says... <laughs> okay, thank you, Claude. We'll have to do that. We'll get to that one another day. Um, uh, Claude was suggesting that we talk about uh, uh, the, the time to wait between meat and milk. Uh, so into the first minute is some people's custom, but uh, not, not, not usually ex uh, acceptable. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Okay. If you have prayed in Sheretz Israel, you are probably familiar with this as the closing formula. And it is said by the Chazan, it is declaimed kind of in a, in a, in a certain uh, theatrical kind of way or just a, a particular way. And I, uh, you know, it's not just said willy-nilly. There is a way of saying it. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call it Nusach, but there is a way of saying it. Probably stems from Dr. Poole. But this is what, uh, this is how Bram Cardozo uh, says it when he's teaching the Chazanim on, on, a, on an audio cassette. At the end of the service, the Chazan says, Kubal, Brachamim, Brachson, Tefilatenu. Kubal, Brachamim, Brachson, Tefilatenu. Right? That's when he's just recording it for the Chazan. Here is a here's Dr. Gerstein saying it at the end of a live service in 1976. So that's that's what we're talking about today. These these short few words, four words. Why is it said at the end of the service? And as we shall see, this is also connected to another custom here at Sharath Israel which is in the Kaddish Titkabal. So at the end of the Kaddish Titkabal, which is uh, said at the end of the Shachrit and the end of, uh, at the end of every service, Mincha, Arbit, Musaf, uh, we have this Kaddish Titkabal. And when the Chazan gets to the, the phrase Titkabal, he says, uh, Titkabal, and the Kahal interject. Kabel brachamim reton tefilatenu. Um, that is what they say. There's no nusach here in New York. People just sort of say it. Some people say it quietly. Some people say it loudly. Uh, but they just insert it. As soon as you hear tit kabal, that's your cue. And you say these words. <clears throat> now, um, the custom of concluding the prayer with... Uh, 
uh, is really not known anywhere else. But this custom of interjecting in the Kaddish this phrase uh, is done in Amsterdam, is done in London. I checked today, it's done in Italy, in Livorno, in Florence. I think it's done in Bordeaux. It's done in North African communities. Maybe Claude can tell us if they do it in the Syrian community, I don't know. Uh, but it is not only unique to Sheriff Israel and not only unique to the Spanish and Portuguese uh, tradition. But what we do, we just sort of shout it out. Uh, I was listening to the Kaddish as it is said in London, which uh, was recorded for a special service in 1956. And uh, you can listen to it here, it's kind of nice. I hope you can hear it, the, the, the response is a little bit low. So that's the way they do it in London. And uh, this was a special service with the choir, but I, I checked with uh, Jonathan Cohen, who told me that that is the way that they say it in London. What I'm trying to point out here is that they say it in the same mode. They don't just interject it plainly. The congregation sings it in the same mode as the Chazan. Um, they have a little uh, new sock for it, which we don't hear in New York. Very nice. So. The topic for today is what we're, what this what is this um, phrase and why are we saying it in the Kaddish at the end of the service? Um, it is as you might I didn't translate for you, but uh, it is a uh, prayer that God should accept uh, our prayers. It's a supplication to the Lord that God should accept our prayers. Kabel brachamim ubratzon et tefilatenu. Um, and the same thing, tikubal, meaning in the future tense, tikubal, but achamir, it's on tefillah tenu. God should uh, accept our uh, our prayers with mercy, or with the uh, you should duratzon, uh, you should willingly or uh, accept them. Um, and now this prayer uh, is said all the time in the Amidah. Um, no, before I already told this story to you. This is a uh, this is just to show you that the uh, while while other com communities don't say at the end of the prayers, they do interject this phrase in the Kaddish. So here I have you just two websites I found, one from the Minhagim of Tunis, one from the Minhagim of Morocco, which both say that they interject this phrase into the Kaddish. <laughs> okay. We'll have to go into that one. Uh, I'm not sure that's true, <laughs> Solomon. You can find me a source. That'd be good. Um, so, uh, um, but but where does this phrase come from? It comes from the Amidah. And uh, in the regular weekday Amidah, we have a prayer called Shuman Koleinu, uh, which is a, a paragraph where we can have personal prayers uh, contained inside it says, "V'kabel b'rachamir zon tefilatenu," right in the prayer. Accept our prayer with loving favor. We ask God to accept our prayer. Right in the next paragraph is uh, is the section about the avodah, about the temple service. We say, "Ritz say," uh, and at the end you have this similar phrase at the end, "T'kabel that the that the you know, worship in the temple should be accepted uh, willingly. Um, and we'll talk about that briefly, but. Right uh, well, now, I want to show you that this prayer, Kabel Brachun Salatino, that's in the Amidah and that we say in the Kaddish and we say at the end of the service, um, also appears in the Silichot, in the um, in the uh, Vinu Malkenu, which we say during the Aseret uh, Mete Shubah, Rosh Hashanah, Tzel Kippur, Abinu Malkenu, Kabel Brachamim Raton Tefilatenu. Presumably, it's lifted right out of the Amidah because the Amidah is a very, very ancient prayer, but Abinu Malkenu is also pretty ancient, ancient litany. So I, I don't know which one comes first. Either way, it's a very old formula. May God accept willingly our prayers. Um, 
It's also known in Aramaic, uh, which you have here in the Selichot. Rachamanat Lotana Kabel Berava. God should uh, uh, receive our prayers with favor. That's the way he translates. Rava he wants, he should want to receive our prayers. And then the next one is very similar also. Rachamana Kabel Tzolotin Ubautin Bidan Aktin. God should receive our prayers uh, in the in the, in the auspicious time. Um, yeah. So the, these these said in Hebrew, it's said in Aramaic, and in fact in the Kaddish itself, which we saw earlier, what, what we're interjecting in the middle is the same phrase in Aramaic. May the prayers and the supplications of Israel be accepted before, before the Lord. Um, so we say it in Aramaic and we say it in Hebrew. So that, uh, that's, that's, that's where we are. Now, if you look in the Talmud and the Mishnah, actually it starts in the Mishnah, in the Mishnah Ta'anit, in the fifth chapter of Ta'anit, uh, you get a, a phrase that there were in the temple um, Mishmarot. The Kohanim and the Leviim had different assigned parts, assigned weeks. Not everybody got, not everybody was working at the same time. And there were different people who had a Mishmar. And there were also Ma'amadot. You had Israelites who would witness as well. Uh, and the Mishnah says that uh, the Anshe Mishmar Hayumit Palim Al Korban Achehem Sheit Kabel Beratzon that they would that they would pray that the korban that was being offered by the Kohen not every Kohen could be doing the uh, could be uh, offering the sacrifices so what were the other ones doing they were praying that the sacrifices should be acceptable to the Lord Sheit Kabel Beratzon now. I maybe one of the scholars can help me with this one, but I found uh, an early form of the Ritzei Bracha that we saw, the Avodah Bracha, uh, in the commentaries on the Mishnah here. There it comes in a couple places, including I think Rashi, but certain uh, other places too. I have here the Tosfot Yom Tov, um, uh, or maybe the maybe the commentary of the Rambam. But you, they they bring you the the original form of the uh, bracha that we have in the Amidah uh, before the temple was destroyed. And it says, Ritzei Adonai Eloheinu Avodat HaMacha Yisrael V'yishei Yisrael U'tfilatam Tekabel Beratzon And then the blessing, Baruch HaMekabel I guess I may have got this in my way. Baruch HaMekabel Avodat Amo Yisrael Beratzon So this is the, the blessing in the Amidah as it was known uh, or at least uh, recreated, perhaps, uh, during the temple days, that God should accept the service of the people of Israel willingly, with favor. Um, so you get this phrase, tikabel bratzon, tikubal bratzon, you'll see what comes later, uh, what, we, what it turns into uh, elsewhere. So uh, that's, that's enough for background, right? So that's, that's what we have. Um, Okay, not sure what you're showing me. You'll tell me later, Solomon. Um, now, when you look in the, Dr. Poole has a great book about the Kaddish. When you look at the Kaddish Titkabal, he has a, a little commentary. It's, and I'll just quote it to you here. It says, Titkabel Tzolot Tahon. It gives you the whole, the whole original phrasing, which we don't need to go into now. It is a closing formula for the end of a service and was perhaps the old dismissal formula of the synagogue in use before the Kaddish was introduced into the synagogue. Now, he's saying this goes really far back. The, the prayer in the Kaddish is really ancient. The terminology of it is so natural and traditional that accepting the response, it is probably the oldest verse of the Kaddish. The 16th blessing of the Shemona Esrei, as we saw, is fully parallel to, to Titkabel, in that it comprehends all of the preceding paragraphs and one prayer, that they may be heard uh, by the Lord and acceptable to the Lord. So it did occur to me that this unique custom that we have at Sharet Israel to say tikubal brachamim raton at the end of the prayers could perhaps uh, have been uh, invented or borrowed 
by Dr. Poole, since it doesn't appear in the prayer books in London, it doesn't appear in the prayer books of Amsterdam, it doesn't appear in any of the prayer books of our Western Sephardic uh, prayer books. But then I did a little digging and I, uh, I thought, where can I find this? Because it doesn't appear in any of the prayer books before Poole, including our own, including Lisa or the Sola. Um, but where might I find it? So in 1841, uh, the Board of Trustees of Sheriff Israel asked Reverend Jacques Jude Alliance, who was a young Chazan who had just started a year or two prior, to assemble the Minhagim of the congregation. And in the archives are lots of loose books, sometimes loose pages of Reverend Lyons attempting to do so. Sometimes you'll get, you'll get like a whole section for Rosh Hashanah and on it, it'll say, in accordance with your request, you know, he's reporting back to the board, here is Rosh Hashanah and here is Yom Kippur. I, I haven't gotten the whole year through, but uh, there's a lot of it. So I figured, let me start looking. And I thought to myself, where is it most likely to appear? Uh, and that will be Tisha B'Av. How come? Because Tisha B'Av is one of the few times when we don't end the service with that phrase. So even if you're used to it and don't want to comment on it because it's so regular, you have to comment about it on Tisha B'Av. And sure enough, when I went to look, it was there. So you can see here on the on the left is the is the minhagim of the evening of Tisha B'Av Eve. And if you look carefully, it says here that uh, no tikabel beratzon, nor any other concluding sentiment otherwise used after the service in the synagogue. Don't say tikabel beratzon. Uh, we'll talk about that, but we say tikubal berachim beratzon tivelteno. Don't say that phrase at the end of the service on a tisha b'av. Um, but if you look on the next day at mincha, for Nachamu, when things are not as dire, uh, you get a different, uh, a different comment. And it says, let's see if we can find it here. Yeah, after the Abelim say Kadish Heshalama, after which Aleinu, and it's concluded with, I don't know if you can see it, Tikubal Brachamim Ratzon Tefilatenu. Exactly as we say today, Dr. Poole didn't make it up. It was being said in the 1840s in New York, in Sherat Israel, Tikubal Barachamim Ubratzon Tefilatenu, exactly as we do today. Um, so Dr. Poole is, is, uh, is, is fine. And our custom is older than the 20th century. How old is it? Let's take a look. So uh, the next thing you're gonna have to just take my word for because I wasn't able to take a trip to the archives uh, for this purpose, but in the order of the service for Thanksgiving Day from 1789, there is a handwritten booklet. It was later printed and published, but there was a handwritten booklet written by Gershom and Satius, and he tells you the order of the service, and he writes his sermon at the end, on the last page, which I don't have for you. I only have the front page for you. On the last page, it says you conclude with Adon Olam, and then he writes, Tikubal brachamim ratzon tefilatim. In the, in the order of the service, in this little handwritten booklet. So already in 1789, they're saying this exact phrase, to, to conclude the service. So where does it come from? So actually, when I told you that they don't say it in Amsterdam, that is today. But we know that they used to. We don't know when it stopped, but it definitely used to be said, or something very similar used to be said, because in uh, what's called the Seder Chazanut, uh, various Chazanim in Amsterdam, as well as in other places, such as what Reverend Lyons was doing in 1840 here, assembled the, uh, like a handbook for the Chazan, going through the whole liturgical year and what they're supposed to say and what melody they're supposed to use and what they're supposed to do, all in great detail. And uh, if you take a look, at the uh, um, Seder Chazanut, I think one of the oldest ones that we have available from the manuscript in the Eitzchayim Library in Amsterdam is actually one from a Chazan who worked here in New York City. And that is um, Yosef Yeshurun Pinto, 
who was, I think, a son of a chazan, a son of a hacham in Amsterdam, uh, and also himself learned in the Eitz Chaim Yeshiva, became a chazan, I think, in London first, and then in New York. Then he ends up moving back to Amsterdam, where he dies later on. He has a long life. He was a teacher. Um, and he has a Seder Chazanut, which he begins in the 1750s. Uh, he becomes Chazan in New York in 1758, and he is the Chazan who teaches Gershom and Yisaitis. He is the most learned Chazan, um, at least of the early period in New York, and uh, he is the teacher of Gershom and Yisaitis. And if you look in his Seder Chazanut, here we have a few pages, uh, you can see at the end of the day of Pesach, he tells you uh, that the Chazan says, Aleinu, and then he concludes, Tikubal Beratzon. I don't know if you can see it. Tikubal Beratzon. Right here, written here. doesn't say exactly what we say. It doesn't say Tikubal Berachamim u Beratzon but it says Tikubal Beratzon. That's how he concludes the service. And if you look through it, every other service, you have the same thing. Tikubal Beratzon at the end of Musaf, at the end of Shabbat, at the end of Shavuot. Tikubal Beratzon, Tikubal Beratzon. That's how you end the service, just like in New York. Exactly when it stopped being done in Amsterdam, I am not sure, but uh, the Chazanim there don't conclude the services this way anymore. And it is not done in London, as far as I know. I don't know when, if it was ever done in London, but no one there knows either, and they don't say it there at all. It's not in Keter Shem Tob. Uh, it seems to be unknown in London for a long time as well. Uh, but it is kept here in Sheret Israel. Now, just in case you say, oh, well, Pinto was in New York. Maybe that wasn't what they did in Amsterdam. I can show you other Seder Chazanut manuscripts. This is the one from the early 19th century. Um, also says, I forget which, I think it's for Shavuot. I forget exactly which holiday this is from. Uh, oh, no, it comes Hoshana Rabba, maybe, or it says Hoshanot here, maybe Sukkot. Um, and it says, you say, Enkelokeinu, Aleinu Shabeach, Adon Olam, Tikubal Baratzon. Right here, Tikubal Baratzon. So in Amsterdam, they certainly used to say this phrase to conclude the service. All of this is background, which we haven't gotten to. Why are we saying it at the end of the service? After Aleinu. Why is this the concluding verse, uh, words? Um, and for that, we have to take a look uh, uh, a few more things. What I'm showing you now is the Machzor Aram Sova the Machzor from Aleppo that was printed in Italy in 1560. Now, this is a very interesting and important uh, Machzor uh, prayer book because this uh, kind of captures the liturgical customs of Syria and in particular of Aleppo before they were completely overrun by the Sephardic exiles from Spain and Portugal. And so this, is, this has many fewer of the, uh, this printing that was done by Bomberg in 1560, which was based on an earlier manuscript, has uh, many fewer of the uh, Sephardic um, interpolations that would come later. And it has this version of Kaddish Titkabal, which is different than ours. And if you take a look here, this is the end of Tfilat Chol, the weekday service. is the very end of the weekday service. Kadir Shit Kabal, Tzolotana, Vitit Abed, Bautana. It's a whole different in Tzolotahon, Ubauton, Amo Kol Beit Israel, Min Kodam Abuhon. Okay, I can't even read what it says here. The Abad Shemaya, Varal, the Chaim, the Imru Amen. It's a different version of Tit Kabal. Then it goes on. Ose shalom and romav. It doesn't have yehe shalom like we have. Ose shalom and romav. Hu brachmav harabim u bechasadav hagedolim u b'schut abotenu hakedoshim v'hateorim v'hanemanim yase shalom imanu v'imachem v'im klal amo yisrael l'chaim l'chaim. No, Lekayim, sorry. Lekayim kara dechtiv Adonai oz demo yitain Adonai barechet demo shalom. It isn't the Kaddish. It has a proof text for why you say Oshe shalom because we have this verse. And then it says at the end of the Kaddish, Tikubalo beratzon, or Tikubal beratzon. 
Mikubal Bratzon. This is the conclusion of the Kadishit Kabal in the Aleppo tradition from 1560. And it ends with these same verses. Now, this is not the last part of the prayers like we have. It is the end of the of the of the Kadishit Kabal. But if you recall from a few weeks ago when we talked about Kaddish earlier, the mourner's Kaddish, the Kaddish Kabal originally was the end of the service. There was nothing afterwards. The things that we say now afterwards were interpolated over time. And so, if you take a look at the next page of this very machzor, you'll get one more. This is the this is what we just read over here. You get one more psalm, which we usually say before the Kaddish. No Kaddish after the psalm, by the way. Then we have a Mishnah. And what we would say would be Kaddish Rabbanan. But this is not what is said here in this 1560 Machzor from Aram Tzova. They have this Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash 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 v
Now, I did find, so that we sort of have an understanding of why we say um, or, or, or uh, what we saw earlier, uh, we say here in Sharat Israel, because that was the concluding phrase at the end of the prayers after the Kaddish Tabal. Um, but where does this interjection come from? So we see it here already a little bit in the Rambam that they, the people said, but that's the phrase that's in the Kaddish. Why do we say, when we hear the Chazan say, that why do we say, uh, uh, why do we interject that in the middle? So I don't have a good answer for you, but I do think it's related to it in the next slide which is a responsa of the Rashba. His name is uh, Rabbi uh, Shlomo or Shemuel uh, Ibn Aderet. He was a Spanish rabbi, I think from Barcelona or something like that, in the 14th century, maybe even earlier, maybe the 13th century, 14th century or 13th century. Someone can check it for me. Uh, Rabbi uh, Shlomo Ibn Aderet. And he is asked in one of his responsa, Lama tiknu Kadish Bishteleshonot. Why does Kadish have two languages? Ivrit Varamit. Why do we say Bechaychonu Yumechonu Bhaid Hobit Israel? So he answers, Da, you should know. He tells the person who was asking. The Ikar Kadish Shatsibor Nina Khar Hashli Sibor Ainbo Ella Lashon Arami. There's no Hebrew in the Kadish. It's only Arame. And it, we skip over part of the Teshuvah, which he talks about that language a little more in the beginning parts of the Kaddish, which we're not interested in. And then he says, And so we also see in the Kaddish, the final Kaddish, which we would call the Tidkabah. It's all in Aramaic. This is the essential Kaddish. That the early ones established. Everything in the Kaddish is in Aramaic. So it is in, in the Seder Deri Amr. And what you see added in every place according to what they want. The Eze Lashon Shalibam Chafetz, whatever language they want to say. Ain have said Bidavar. There's no, nothing lost. Gam Elu Shemaitikin Achshav Meikara Kadish. Miktato Belashon Akodesh. Ain Chashash Bidavar. It doesn't matter if you say part of it in Hebrew, part of it in English. No problem. Shata Ain Anu Midabrim Belashon Armi. We don't speak Aramaic anymore. So it's okay that we say parts of it in Hebrew. So I don't know, because he doesn't say it explicitly, but I suspect that we say because there is some old tradition to say that in, in Hebrew and not in Aramaic. And so we're holding on in some fashion. When the Chazan says in Aramaic, the people say it in Hebrew. Instead of That's my theory. Anyway, all we can we, we know for sure from this Teshuvah is that there were places saying parts of the Kaddish in Hebrew. Why? Because they don't speak Aramaic. And it's okay. And even and he and Narashma says, even if you mix it up in the middle, it's all fine. <laughs> That's what he said. Okay. Now we're going to get to something a little bit off the beaten path. I think by now. Let's go back. Now we should have seen so far that there is a phrase that is said at the end of the prayers in the early modern period, as we saw in Aram Tsova, uh, that says, and we saw in the Seder Chazanut that was being done hundreds of years later, that the conclusion of the prayers, you say, it's a nat natural conclusion to, to pray that the Lord should accept our, uh, that should, should accept our prayers. And why do we say it in the middle of Kaddish Kabal? So maybe because they wanted to say it in Hebrew. Also, as we saw it from Rambam, that that entire phrase, what we call the Kaddish Kabal, 
was interjected by the people at the end of the service. So similar to the whole thing. Okay, now that we've seen that, let's take a look at some other liturgies. What you have before you is from the Karite prayer book, not rabbinic, not at all rabbinic. Don't bring this to synagogue. You won't be able to use it. Um, and this is a prayer book that was printed in 1871 by Abraham Firkovich. You can, it was also then reset and redone in 2002. You can get it on, uh, uh, what's the name of that place? The, the Sidur Pro, Sidur Project online. Uh, at the very end of the prayers, and their prayers are different than ours. There are some similarities, but they're very different. We'll leave it at that. I'm not, not, this is not the time to go through the Karai prayer book. But at the very end, there are two things after their standard prayers. They don't have uh, Kaddish like we have or anything like that, but they have something called Natinat Shalom. They say, they say Shalom to, to, the, to the congregation. And this is, and this is the... Uh, Second to last paragraph of the prayer of the prayers of the daily prayers. Tikubal bratzon tefilatchem amen. Tikubal bratzon tefilatchem amen. Hazak shalom shalom shalom. I'll call Yisrael Yisrael no shab. And then some verses. Um, so you have this phrase tikubal bratzon keep appearing in the Karite prayer book also. Okay, it's coming from the 19th century. I don't know how old it is. I didn't have the time to research the Karite manuscripts. Um, and as we saw, Tzikubal Bratzon is the concluding formula in our prayer book already at a pretty early date, much earlier than this. But it is interesting to note that the concluding conclusion of the Karai prayer book has a very similar phrase, Tzikubal Bratzon Tefilatrem Amen. Now, go to an earlier liturgy, much earlier liturgy, the Samaritan liturgy. This is something that uh, is said by the Samaritans, you know, there's only a couple hundred of them, maybe a thousand of them, I don't even know, not that many Samaritans left um, in Israel, and I guess there are probably some in Jordan, Palestinian territories, um, but these are the people that that give the, uh, that do the um, Korban Pesach every year on, uh, uh, on Har Gerizim. And if you look at their prayer book, which was, uh, published in like 1910 or 1915 or something like that by a man named Crowley, um, you will see not only at the end, it's a little bit dispersed throughout the prayers. Many times they say a certain prayer. So here on the left, you'll see the prayers, Tzolot Mo'ed Chag HaMatot Bahar Grizim. This is the prayers that they say on Pesach on Har Grizim. And they say, El Rachum Bechanun. Then it says, Yemar HaKohen. The priest says, Maran yikabel tzolot chom. Maran here is talking about Hashem should accept our prayers, and that is not just a phrase of its own. That is its own. That's like the title of a prayer, which comes up right here. Maran yikabel tzolot chom I mean, there's a whole prayer here. This is the prayer. Maran yikabel tzolot chom. That is their prayer, and that appears several times in their prayer book. Also, here's one from Shabbat. Towards the end of their Shabbat prayers, it says, El Rachum Machanun Erech Hapayim, Rav Chesed, Eheye Asher, Eheye, Yemar HaKohen, Maran Yekabel Tzolot Chom, that our prayer should be accepted. So it's an old phrase. Not only does it appear in the Samaritan literature, this kind of phrase, but it also appears somewhere you might not expect. This is the concluding prayer from the sermons of St. Augustine. Augustine was a church father from the 5th or the 4th century uh, who lived in North Africa. Sometimes they call him the African, I think. Uh, and in his, this is the prayer that he does at the end of his sermons. And sometimes it's written out fully. Sometimes it just says, conversi, uh, you know, as, the, as whoever was writing it. So now he says the prayer. Uh, and if you see this phrase that I have uh, made uh, bold, Ut preces nostras in bene placito suo exaudire dignetur. I don't speak Latin, but Google does. Um, and this is what it means, that he may deign to hear our prayers according to his good pleasure. Tikubal tfilatrem 
You know, uh, that's what it says, uh, just like we have. So why am I showing you all this? Um, do I think that our phrase comes from that? No. Do I think that it comes from the Samaritan or the Karite or the Christian prayers? No. Do theirs come from ours? I don't think so. Maybe. But it's such a basic concept that at the end of your prayers, you ask God to accept them. That God, it doesn't. You know, it's not such a unique uh, concept so that you see it everywhere. Um, this whole idea that God should accept our prayers, should, should heed our prayers and uh, willingly, and it should be, it should be for, for good. Um, that is a common idea that you can get in many religions and many liturgies. Uh, and especially at the end of the prayers, after we've asked for what we want to ask for, God, please accept what we asked for. And that's, that's my spiel for you. So when we say, Tikubal Rahim Tontu uh, it's not just a throwaway phrase, it's the conclusion, and it's a conclusion for a reason, and it's probably very old, um, much older than you think, and Dr. Poole didn't make it up, <laughs> and that's, that's my presentation for all of you today, I'm going to stop the recording.